a very, 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 very comfortable operating under the law, the Mosaic laws and the instructions of the law, the letter of the law. And Jesus said, listen, I'm coming with a more better covenant. As a matter of fact, I don't come to destroy the law. I am the fulfillment of the law. Everything in the law points towards me. And this is what I mean about the division that I'm bringing. What I'm saying is, is that I'm going to give you choices. I'm going to give you a choice, a single choice. You need to accept. You need to accept and believe that I am the Son of God, and I came to, I came to sacrifice my life for the sins of the world. And if you believe that, you shall be saved. You shall make it and enter into my rest. Well, we know now, and as they knew back then, not everyone would accept that. Jesus' own family didn't accept it. Amen. That's the division God was talking about. We can understand this. We can be all, we can be in a family, amen, and we are when you're born into a natural family. And each and every person that's born into that family is born unique. They're individuals. The Bible says that each and every one of us are fearfully and wonderfully made, amen. There may be certain characteristics or physical characteristics that people can look upon and see that we belong in the same family, but because we are uniquely and, and, and uniquely made by God, we don't always have think. We don't always think the same. We don't always act the same. That's just the nature of family. And if I'm lying, somebody please, somebody please contact me and tell me that in their family don't nobody not act, don't nobody uh, act different. You tell you call you contact me and let me know what family that you live in that you don't have difference of opinions. You contact me and let me know that what family you live in you don't have sibling squabblings. You contact me and let me know what family you live in that your parents have arguments, don't have arguments. I just want to know. I want can I find a family? Amen. So what God was saying is that because of the uniqueness that I made within you and I have you all have a free will you all have a mind you can think on your own some are going to choose me and some are not going to not choose me that's the division but God never he listen to me people he never intended for separation of the family why Matthew Matthew 19 6 says what God has joined together let no man separate. But here's that prodigal son. He wanted to separate from his father and go off. And not just separate, he wanted to take everything that he would get if his father had died. And not many days after that, the younger son gathered up all that he had and journeyed into a distant country. And there he wasted his fortune in reckless and loose from restraint living. That's Proverbs 14, 12, 16, 25 all day long there is a way that seems right to a man but the end thereof is death and he was killing himself all because he wanted to have what he thought was rightfully due to him don't you know that any rights that you have stem from your father oh oh, oh whoa oh what did i just say don't you know that any rights that you have stem from your father and who is your father Jesus says you only have one. That's God the Father. Oh my God. You know when you operate in sin, when you operate in sin, you lead a sin life, a disobedient life. Don't you know that you are asking God that you want to separate from him and you want rightfully what's owed to you. Because God promised that he would provide for our every need. The Lord is our shepherd. We shall not want. He promises that. And we know God is a keeper of his promises. We heard what he said about his word. Numbers 23, 19 and Isaiah 55, 11. So why can't I just go on off and just do my thing? Oh yeah, I just got to go find myself. But in order for me to find myself, I need some assistance. I need some finances. I need what you owe me, God. Oh, oh, my, oh my own, I'm sorry. I need what you owe me, Dad. So I can go off and just live my life the way I want to live. That's what he said. And when he had spent all he had, and when he had spent all he had, a mighty famine came upon that country, and he began to fall behind and be in want. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That's what happens when you separate yourself from the father or the family or anything. Well, from God. 
Amen. Amen. Jesus said, I am the vine. You are the branches. With me. Attached to me. You can do all things. You can accomplish all things. You have all things. But apart from me, you cannot do nothing. You can't live. Why? Because it's in me that you live and have your very being. How are you going to separate yourself from your life source? Because the grass looks greener on the other side. Uh huh. So he went and forced, glued himself upon one of the citizens of that country who sent him into the fields to feed hogs. That's what happens when you fall low, y'all. Uh, you'll go find somebody, anybody, everybody. I need to find somebody that I can. You got something? Oh, okay. I want to get a test. You. I don't care if we got problems. I don't care if there's differences about us. Uh, if there was under uh, normal circumstances, I would not give you the time of the day. But I need you. Oh, I need you. Yeah, you need the Lord. But when you ain't with the Lord, then you'll just have to accept what you get. Uh huh. That's what happens. That's what happens when you operate in disobedience. Amen. Disobedience live, uh, uh, leads to wanton living. It leads to unrational thinking. It puts you in places that you ain't never got no business being in. And you never should have allowed yourself to get there. So he went and did that. And he, and he, and he went and got himself upon someone the scissors of that country. who sent him into the field to feed hogs. Now here's what happens when you fall low. Here's a young man. He's a Hebrew. He's a he, he's of the Hebrew li uh, 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 lineage, man. His DNA. He's a Jew. He's a seed of Abraham. He he be us. I am a seed of Abraham. Uh huh. But the, and and the Hebrews had a problem. They don't like hogs. They didn't like to mess around hogs. They like to be around pig. That swine. That dirty, filthy swine. This is what happens when you fall so low. You'll find yourself. Uh, uh, you'll find yourself in compromises, putting yourself in places and positions and people that you would never be involved with. I said that before, but this is how low you can fall. You can fall so low that you be sent into the field to feed the hogs. The, all, the hogs eat the slop. I don't know if anybody ever seen a hog pen. I have. It ain't a pretty sight. Who would gladly, and he would gladly have fed on and filled his belly with the carapods that the hogs were eating. That's how low he fell. He was eating. He was eating with the hogs. He was willing to eat with the very things he was watching and caring for. But they could not satisfy his hunger. And nobody gave him anything better. You can't look for better when you're in worse. He was an immature young boy, disobedient son. He left home before his time. Them that wait upon the Lord. Oh, my God. Oh, oh. Then when he came to himself, he had a Holy Ghost moment, y'all. And how many higher servants of my father have enough food and even food to spare, but I'm perishing, dying here of hunger. Now, let me tell you something. That's a good thing right there. One thing that you have to understand, and I tell people this all the time when I minister to them, especially men. Life experiences are important for each and every person and especially a believer in Christ. God himself allows us to have life experiences so that we can learn him. Amen. God, the experience that we have in life are for us to learn him. Amen. And what am I saying? What minister, what, is, what are you saying? Well, let me tell you. If you did not have no experience, there would be no way for you to know God. You could be you could be respectful to God, you can know of God, but you would never know him. Knowing him and knowing of him is two different things. How do I know that? Come here, Job. Tell your story. The Bible says there was a man named Job of the East. And this was a most righteous man. He eschewed evil. And everything he did was in according to his belief of God in God. Uh, uh, everybody respected him so much so that 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 he was uh, he, he was esteemed. He was he was well respected. Amen. And Job was a conscientious man when his children grew up and he had nurtured them up to the point where they were able to be adults. He had seven sons and on occasion they would have parties and when they had their parties, they would invite the three sisters over. Job, when he found out what they was having parties, he would go into prayer just in case they had erred along the way. And why did he have to do that? Because back in them days and even in our days, that can absolutely happen. Uh-huh. You get around there, start having a party and get a party atmosphere and that party atmosphere, you bring party favors. Uh-huh. Back then, 
then they drank a lot of wine. Back today, they drink a lot of wine. They do drugs and all kinds of things. And don't you know, some things I have, oh my God. Oh, that flesh, that flesh, it don't mind that to be in that kind of environment because the Bible says the flesh is evil and wicked and it's perverse in every way. And the reason Job had to pray for his sons because back then, God told the people of the Hebrew people that when he uh, delivered them out of Egypt, that they were the state of themselves. He put, he sent them to a land that they did not do anything to uh, achieve it. They didn't cultivate it. They didn't build the houses. They did nothing. God gave them the land. He gave them explicit instructions. Do not intermingle with your neighbors. So what did they do? They multiplied. They had kids. What did they do? All right, here, Billy Country, they had sex with one another. Job had to pray. And he did. And then the Bible says, there came a day when the sons of God, the angels of God, and Satan came to appear before God to give an account. Whoa, Minister Weatherby, what did you say? say? I thought Lucifer, Satan, he fell from heaven like light. Somebody saw him falling like lightning. And he fell from heaven and not only did he fall, he took a third of the angels that went along with him because he thought that he could present himself and, and, and exalt himself in a measure that took him above God. No, that happened. That absolutely happened. You're right. I'm not disputing that, but let me tell you, even Satan is subject to God. All creations are subject to the creator. And the Bible says that you have to give an account for the things that you do. Satan, just like us, he has to give an account. Oh, he's the prince of this air, but he's not kings, capital K, of kings. He is not lords, capital L, of lords. The earth is the Lord, the fullness thereof, it all belongs to him. And if that be the case, God being a sovereign God over all his creations, we all are subject to God. Amen. Even Satan. So Satan came to give an account. And God asked him, Satan, what are you doing? Well, I'm walking to and fro on New York. Pop, uh, 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 Satan, 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 Satan. Let me ask you that question again, Satan. What are you doing? I'm walking to and fro on New York. Satan, 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 Satan. What are you doing? Walking to and fro on the earth. Okay, I ain't gonna ask you no more. Why you wanna lie, man? Oh, I'm sorry. I ain't no need for me to question you. You, you, the, you, the, you was alive from the beginning. You're the father of lies. Let me just help you out, Satan. Have you considered my servant Job? Why did I say that? Why did God even say that? Because the Bible says, yes, Satan is walking to and fro on the earth, seeking whom, oh, walking to and fro on the earth. The part Satan left out, seeking whom he may devour. Have you considered devouring my servant Job? Oh, yes, I did. But let me tell you, I, 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 I try to get at him. I can't. You got to hedge around him. You keep blessing him. You keep providing for him. You stop providing for him and I'll have him curse your name. Okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to let you come at him. Touch all his possessions and things that he owns, including his children and everything else, but don't kill him. Oh, really, God? I got that. I, I can do that. Went at him. Three, yeah. Yeah, Joe. Lost everything. At the end of that first chapter, it's, and it's in the first chapter, I'm just paraphrasing because I'm moving along according to time. He kept on, he said, well, you know what? Uh, he ran his clothes and tore his clothes and said, naked I came in this world, naked shall I, shall I, shall I leave. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. And then the second, the second chapter starts off the same way. And then God said the same thing to Satan. He said, okay, well, let me touch his health. God said, okay, same thing. Don't kill him. All right. Vexed him. Went back out touched his health <laughs> excuse me Job took on a, a soreness on his whole body sores all over his body he looked pitiful sat down took a pot of uh, a scraper scraping himself and his wife saying oh my god are you kidding me we done all this stuff I done gone through with you and you why don't you you still skewing you still trying to be righteous hold on to your why don't you curse God and die later on in the book y'all Job announced that he did not know God until he went through all everything he did. He had to go through all of that so he could know God. So what am I saying? That we have to have our experience in order to know God. And that's what happened to the prodigal son. And I'm not going to go through all these verses, but I'm going to hit some of the highlights of them. Because after that, uh, 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 he said, I will get up and go to my uh, father and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. That's what we need to do. You confess your sins unto the Father. Amen. And admit that you are a sinner. Because if you don't, 
all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Amen. So as he did that, he went.